welcome to a series about recreating our own Zelda game. The purpose of these videos is to discuss the game logic that goes into programming a game like A Link to the Past, but I plan to present this information in a way that anyone, even non-programmers, can understand. In this episode, we're going to work on creating Link and making him move around using our controller or arrow keys. Let's jump right into our new project. I'm using Love2D and Lua for this, but the logic we'll be talking about holds true for any other framework or language. Running our project as is will yield a blank screen, since we don't have any code yet. To keep things looking nice, let's add a background. Next, before we put Link in this game and talk about the illusion of movement, I'd like to explain how the coordinate system works in game development. Every pixel on screen can be represented by an X and Y coordinate, or ordered pair. The entire game world is a big grid of pixels, and everything is in reference to the origin. Let's say it's right here, point zero zero. Of course, being a grid, there is an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-values increase as you go to the right along the axis, and y-values increase as you go down along the axis. This one might be different than what you're used to. In math classes, they typically teach that y increases upwards, but in most 2D game frameworks, with some exceptions of course, y increases going down. To demonstrate this coordinate system further, I will create a player object, which has an x value and a y value. Then I will draw a link to these player coordinates. And there he is. Hello. I'll go ahead and display the player coordinates in the top left. Now, currently, Link is located at position 0, 0, right on the origin. Let's change his x value to negative 400. Now he is located over here. Specifically, he is 400 pixels to the left of the origin. Similarly, if he was at positive 400, he'd be to the right of the origin. If we adjust the y value, negative 250 is up here, and positive 250 is down here. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's get into the whole point of this video, making Link move. The whole concept of movement relies on our gameplay loop, which is accessible through an update function. Basically, any code that goes into update will be run every single frame. And since this game will run at a smooth 60 frames per second, that means this code will run 60 times every second. Of course, frame rate will vary from time to time, and we will account for this later on. But for now, it's safe to assume 60 FPS. Making things move in a game is all an illusion. Really, all we're going to do is change the position of Link a little bit every frame. Let's demonstrate this. In our update function, we can increase the player's X position by 1. This increase is going to happen every frame that the game runs. So the result is this. Link slowly slides to the right as his X position gradually increases. We can try this with Y as well. If we decrease Y in the update function, he'll move upwards. Additionally, we can adjust both X and Y at the same time, and this will result in Link moving diagonally. Right now, we're only updating each direction by one pixel per frame. We can make Link move faster or slower by adjusting this. If we update it by 5 each frame, Link will move 5 pixels per frame on each axis, which is 5 times faster than before. So, knowing all this, we can map these position updates into key presses. To move to the right, for example, we can test to see if the controller's right direction or our right arrow key is pressed down. And if it is, then we'll update the X position to move right. We can do the same for left, up, and down. Now that we have each direction working, we have a fully mobile character. We can move in any direction, and holding down two keys at once makes Link move diagonally, just like in the original game. Of course, Link still needs some work. It's kind of unsettling watching him float around the screen like this, always staring you right in the eyes. Next time we'll work on adding some walking animations. The code for this project will be open source, and you can find it on GitHub. Check the description for more details. The next video on animation is already up, by the way, so feel free to click the box for that. 
Also, to get the shot of Link saying hello, I actually programmed in this speech bubble to appear whenever you hold down the H key. So, I hope you enjoy this new feature, I guess.